So a year ago at this time, there were projections that we might have a million people infected before the Ebola outbreak had ended. It turns out that 2015 really was a good year uh, as far as containing it faster than we thought we could. At this point, uh, both Liberia and Sierra Leone have been declared Ebola free. We're still waiting for the last cases from Guinea to be released from the hospital, but nobody's under quarantine anymore. So we're very close to starting the 42 day countdown in Guinea, and hopefully that will be the end of Ebola in West Africa, at least for this outbreak. How did we get to this point um, in terms of being on top of it where we, horrible that even one person died, but 11,000 where we're, when we were saying it could be as many as a million? Yeah, so we had thought that we would need the vaccine. The hope was that public health measures could control it enough that we would have time to get the vaccine and then just heavily vaccinate across West Africa. And we thought that might be what was needed to really end the epidemic. But it turns out that health education and contact tracing and quarantine really work. It was effective. Yeah. It was very effective. So public health solved this more than technology. But it's still good that we have the vaccines in trials. The next time that we have an Ebola outbreak, whether it's in West Africa or back in Central Africa, where most of the previous outbreaks took place, we'll have a different toolkit to contain the outbreak a lot faster. How are they able to, to keep it from, um, from crossing borders, pretty much? Well, of course, part of the reason this became so bad is that it did cross borders initially from Guinea into Sierra Leone, then to Liberia. And it did take an international response to be able to keep it from spreading farther. So we've learned about cross-country communication, including in places where the language barrier is there, that some of the affected countries speak English and some speak French, and learning how to communicate across those language barriers was really important. So we'll see more of that in the future, more communication within West Africa and across the globe about when there seems to be an event occurring, getting the entire international community involved quickly. What kind of lessons did we learn? You, you just named many of them. Yeah, well, the most important lesson is that public health measures work, that health education and, and those sorts of community-based out, outbreak control initiatives are really important. But we've also seen uh, countries like China that have stepped into global health in a new way. This is really one of the few responses that wasn't just the United States and Europe stepping in. This was China and other countries in the whole world stepping in, recognizing a problem and working together in a new way. West Africa in itself, was it educated in a way that it had not been up to this point? And, and will they be prepared if, God forbid, something like this happens again? Absolutely. The public health systems have been strengthened that we didn't expect to see Ebola in West Africa, so there wasn't a particular response plan. But what we now have is not just in West Africa the ability to respond to Ebola, but to whatever other infectious diseases might emerge. So the ministries of health, not just in the three affected countries uh, of Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, but also Nigeria and other places that had just a few cases or were border countries, they've all stepped up their preparedness. And they're all going to be monitoring Ebola at least through the first three months of 2016 to make sure that it's really over. So the whole uh, public health sector in the West African region has been strengthened.